Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here with James Jacob Prash live in Holland. Uh, Jacob, a tale of two rabbis. I'd like to talk to my Jewish friends today, Jewish friends who don't believe Jesus, Yeshua is the Messiah. Please listen with an open and broad mind. I'm going to tell you a very true story from the history of Judaism. You can verify it from the Mishnah. You can ask a learned rabbi if it's true. The facts, I assure you, are all true, and you can easily, easily verify them in a conversation with an honest rabbi or just by researching it yourself. I'm not embellishing it. I'm only stating historical facts that are Mishnaic. There is a character in Judaism who is very important in Judaism and very important in Christianity. The New Testament in the book of Acts speaks about him, as does the Mishnah. His name is Rabbi Gamaliel. Gamaliel is the grandson of Rabbi Hillel, the founder of the Pharisaic school of Hillel, one of the two rival schools of Pharisaic Judaism. The Pharisees followed the Hasmonean period and came from the Hashmonaim. You have the school of Shammai and the school of Hillel. Rabbi Gamaliel had a much more benevolent attitude towards monotheistic Gentiles, Gentile god fearers, than the school of Shammai. Rabbi Gamaliel was seen as a tzaddik, a very, very righteous Jew in Judaism. So much so that the rabbinic literature states, the sages, the sages wrote of him, that when he died, righteousness perished with him. That when he died, righteousness perished with him. This is Rabbi Gamaliel the grandson of Rabbi Hillel, the founder of the school of Hillel. Now the New Testament tells us something very interesting about him as well. Remember, the New Testament authors were Jews, the exception being Luke, who was a Gentile convert to Judaism. And in the book of Acts, we read the following. Rabbi Gamaliel stated, according to the New Testament, that... If Jesus is not the Messiah, if he's just another false Messiah, as the Hebrews had many false messiahs, if he's just another false one, that Christianity, as it came to be called, would perish, it would collapse, it wouldn't exist, it would come to nothing. Historically, all of the false messianic movements of Judaism have come to nothing. Remember, Rabbi Akiva said that Simon Bar Kokhba was the Messiah. Simon Bar Kokhba, according to the Israeli general, archaeologist, and historian who wrote the book on Bar Kokhba, Igal Yadin, once kicked the 90-year-old rabbi in the head and killed him. Rabbi Akiva proclaimed him to be the Messiah. Following the devastation at Betar, the Jews were driven out of their land for 18 centuries after following this false messiah proclaimed to be the Mashiach by Rabbi Akiva. Now today, popular Judaism will esteem him, but what they won't tell you, a name given to him at the time was not simply Bar Kokhva, son of a star, based on a prophecy in Numbers about the messiah that a star would come from the east, but it was based on something else. Bar Kizva in Aramaic, the son of a lie. The son of a lie. Well, what became of Bar Kokhba's rebellion? Disaster for the Jewish people. There were many false messiahs who the rabbis proclaimed to be the messiah. Jacob Frank, Shabbat Taisvi, Massive, massive movements, messianic movements with huge numbers, even the majority of rabbis in many places saying it was the Messiah. 
One converted to Islam, the other converted to Roman Catholicism. It came to nothing. Today, it's the Lubavitch movement. The Lubavitch movement is in trouble. Rabbi Schneerson is dead. Hasidic Judaism is mystical, based on Kabbalah. They believe in a form of reincarnation, where the spirit of the Besh, Baal Shem Tov, is reincarnated into the Rebbe, their rabbi, who they call a Rebbe, who they believe is a tzaddik, a righteous one, in the character of Rabbi uh, Gemini and so forth. In any event, the whole Hasidic movement came from Baal Shem Tov, the Beshk, down through Isaac Loria into the Hasidic movement. But the reason there are so many Hasidic movements is they dispute with each other whose Rebbe really has the spirit of the Besh. So you have Babov and Vizhnitz and Lubavitch, Satma, Nutrai, Karda, Bells, and many of these sects hate each other. They're rivals. Some are anti-Zionist, like the Nutrai, Karda, the Satma. In any event, let's continue. I remember in 1991, Rabbi from New York, never said foot in Israel, Menachem Schneerson, said the Messiah would have his advent on the earth by Rosh Hashanah of 1991 because in the 1991 war with Iraq, Israel survived the attacks of Saddam Hussein's gun missiles. He said this was an oracle from God. He said it was a divine oracle and the Messiah would come. Well, the next day I went down to Stamford Hill in London where the Lubavitch had their local epicenter and began giving out tracts and asking them, where is the Messiah? You said he would be here. Your Rabbi Akiva said he would be here. And they only got angry. Other Hasidic sects said he was a false prophet, which he was. Based on Deuteronomy 18, he predicted something, Bashem Hashem, in the name of God, and it didn't happen. Moses said, Menachem Shneerson is a false prophet. Again, the reincarnated spirit, he died without ever coming to Israel. Yet you see posters of him all over the world. Melech Mashiach, King Messiah. Hasidic Judaism believes only the Rebbe, the Tzaddik, can go directly to God on basis of Torah. You have to go through him because he has this spirit of the Besh. Well, the problem is it's a dynasty. It goes from father to son, and if there's no son, a son-in-law. Menachem Schneerson had neither a son or son-in-law, so they have no tzaddik. They have no way to get to God. So they maintain a 24-7 vigil at his grave in Queens, New York, believing he's going to raise from the dead. Some of the Lubavitch movement believe it, some don't. And so I asked them, you believe that the Jewish Messiah has to come and die and then raise from the dead? And they said, yes. And I said, I'm glad we agree on something. You believe in Christianity. No, no, no. But you believe that the Messiah had to come and die and raise from the dead? Now, this makes other Orthodox Jews very angry because they accused the Lubavitch of believing what Christians believe. In a sense, they're right. The Messiah would come and die. At the same time, they have the wrong Messiah. Menachem Schneerson did not raise from the dead, but Jesus, Yeshua, did. It says in the Abu Dazera, this is written by rabbis who were trying to persuade other Jews not to believe in him in the early stages of the Christian faith, that Yeshua, Yeshu Hanotzri, Ben Stadi, as some of them called him, was crucified by the Romans at Pesach. He rose from the dead, and then he ascended into heaven from the Mount of Olives, exactly what's written in the Gospels and in the Book of Acts. Later on, mystical rabbis said he did it by Kabbalistic secrets. He had the Tetragrammaton, the name of Hashem, under his tongue or under his foot, that's how they explained it centuries later. But rabbis who were trying to persuade Jews not to believe Yeshua, Jesus is the Messiah, 
actually admitted that he was crucified, rose from the dead, and ascended into heaven. It's one thing when your followers say that. It's another thing when your opponents say it. The rabbis admitted it happened. Read the Avodah Zerah. Now let's continue looking at this. You have Rabbi Gamaliel spoken of highly in the Gospels and in, in the Book of Acts in the New Testament and in the Mishnah. They both agree. He said that if Jesus is not the Messiah, Christianity wouldn't last. It would become something like the disunited and discombobulated Lubavitch movement is today in the aftermath of the death of Rabbi Akiva, or as what became of Jacob Frank, Shabbat Taisvi, Bar Kokhba, etc. But that's not happened. Rather, Christianity has grown, making non Jews believe in the Jewish God in fulfillment of the prophecies of Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. Yishayahu Hanavi, the nations, the Amin, the peoples of the nations, would resort to the Shorish Ishai, the root of Jesse, who the rabbi said was a metaphor for the Messiah. This caused such problems that Rambam admitted Moses Maimonides in his guide for the perplexed that Christianity came to make the Gentile nations believe in the true Jewish God. He admitted it. Well, let's go back now to Rabbi Gamaliel, the tzaddik. Rabbi Gamaliel ran a rabbinic academy. He trained other rabbis in the tradition of the school of Hillel. And he had many famous students who became rabbis. In modern terms, we would have said smichad, and the smichad. One was Rabbi Anklios, whose, pa whose family were Gentile converts to Judaism. Anklios is, of course, very important and very famous in Judaism because of the Targum Anklios. He translated the Hebrew scriptures into Aramaic, uh, the Syriac text and so forth, dealing with the Syriac text. He translated it into Aramaic so the people could read it. This was Rabbi Akrios. Another one of the students was Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai. Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, known in Judaism as the Mighty Hammer. When Jerusalem was surrounded by Titus and the Romans in 70 AD, he was smuggled out of the city in a coffin and survived the onslaught. Now that the temple was destroyed, there was a problem. The prophet Daniel, chapter 9, said the Messiah needed to come and die before the second temple would be destroyed. And that happened in Shavim Ahrei Hasfira, 70 AD. I watched a Lubavitch gentleman a Lubavitch rabbi, trying to argue Daniel 9, and he misled the people. He didn't even tell the truth about the tabulation. It says clearly the Messiah had to come and die before it would be destroyed. And there are Talmudic references saying that's what it's talking about. Nonetheless, what do they do now with no high priesthood, no Levitical priesthood, and no temple to sacrifice? Mosaic Judaism, the Judaism of Moses, could no longer exist. Rabbi Akiva convened a conference at a place called Yavne, which today would be located in the outer suburbs to the southeast of Tel Aviv, modern Tel Aviv. Near, at that time, it would have been kind of a satellite town of the biblical port of Yavne of Jaffa. So as the Council of Yavne, where there was some kind of a formal agreement on the final canon of the Tanakh, of the Hebrew scriptures. <laughs> but he decides to do something. 
instead of a Levitical priesthood, we'll have rabbis. Instead of sacrifices, we'll have mitzvot, good works that we can even invent based on some kind of interpretation of scripture or otherwise. Instead of a temple of Bet Mikdash, we'll have the synagogue. He invents Talmudic, what would become Talmudic Judaism. He invents rabbinic Judaism because the Judaism of Moses could no longer exist. He admitted it. It could no longer exist. If you read the Torah or the Navim, the prophets, or the Katuvim, the writings, the Tanakh, what Christians call the Old Testament, if you were to read it, you will not find any synagogues, you will not find any rabbi. They say Moshe Rabbeinu, that's not a biblical concept. These things come from rabbinism. What is today called Judaism is actual rabbinism. Real Judaism has not existed in the mosaic sense of Moses since 70 AD. Little did Akiva know, little did Yohanan ben Zakkai know, little did any of these people know, later followed by other rabbis from Babylon called the Gaonim, then by people like Rashi in Europe, they had no idea that they were fulfilling the prophecies of Jeremiah chapter 2. The Jewish people, after rejecting the Messiah, the fountain of living water, the one who would give the Maim Hayim, would hoop for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that could hold no water. They would invent a spiritually bankrupt religious system. Now, do not misinterpret this as anti-Jewish or anti-Semitic. Roman Catholicism is not scriptural Christianity. The Eastern Orthodox Church, these goys bowing down to statues and all this, this is not biblical Christianity. The anti-Semitic history of Roman Catholicism or Lutheranism, this is not biblical Christianity. But neither is rabbinism biblical Judaism. Jesus was a Jew who taught a Jewish thing to Jewish people. He never came to invent a new religion. He came to fulfill the Torah and give the new covenant that was promised in Jeremiah 31. I will make literally cut new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. He inaugurated this on a Paschal Seder in the suzerainty ritual. <clears throat> Jesus was a Jew who taught a Jewish thing in a Jewish way to Jewish people. It was the church fathers, particularly the ones after the Council of Nicaea in the time of Constantine, who took a Hebraic faith and made it a Hellenistic one. They took a Jewish belief system and turned it into a religious system based on Greek philosophy, Platonism, and so forth. In the Middle Ages, it became based on Aristotelianism with Thomas Aquinas. Judaism did the same. It became based on Aristotelianism, based on Rambam, who was an Aristotelian. That's what happened. Roman Catholicism, Greek Orthodoxy, they're not biblical Christianity, and either is rabbinism, biblical Judaism. We have to just go back to the scriptures. What did Jesus himself teach and do? What did his apostles teach about him, and what did they do? They were all Jewish. Jacob Neusner, Orthodox rabbi, distinguished professor from Brown University of Judaism, admits that the Gospels are the pivotal second temple period in Jewish literature between the early Midrashim and the intertestamental apocryphal literature. He admits that. It's second temple period Jewish literature and it's pivotal. Talk to academic rabbis or read them. Some of them are alive, some are no longer alive. 
Read Rabbi David Flusser, Professor of Hebrew University. Read Rabbi Pintus Lapid, Baralan University, who says from a Jewish perspective, the historicity of the resurrection of Jesus is undeniable. An Orthodox rabbi and professor of Hebrew. Hi, Maccabee, these people, they all admit the Jewishness of Jesus. These are serious rabbis. Now, of course, they tried to say there's a difference between Paul and what Jesus taught. There's where they make a mistake. No, there's a difference between what the church fathers taught and what Jesus taught. Paul simply took the teachings of Jesus and expanded it to the Gentiles. After Nicaea and after what happened with Constantine, particularly after Augustine of, of Hippo and these other people, Cyprian of Carthage, Ambrose of Milan, the first church fathers and those who followed them, John Chrysostom. Christianity became Christendom. But beginning with Yohanan ben Zakkai, followed by Akiva, and then the Gaonim, Judaism became Rabbinism. What you have today in the main is Christendom, a Christianity that is not scriptural, that is alien to the teachings of Jesus and the apostles. And what you have today in the main is rabbinism, a bastardization of Judaism that is not the Judaism of Moses and the prophets. Same thing. Papacy and all these things are nonsense. So too are the rabbinites. It comes from the Sanhedrin. It doesn't come from the Word of God. You've got a false Christianity and a false Judaism. But right now, I'm talking to the Jewish people whom I love. So Yohanan ben Zakkai does this thing. He replaces the temple with the synagogue the sacrifices with the mitzvot and the Levites and Kohanim with the rabbis. But it's recorded in the Mishnah on his deathbed, he was weeping. And his disciples came to him saying, O oh, Rabbi Akiva, the mighty hammer, why do you weep? And he said, I'm about to meet Hashem, God, blessed be his name. And there are two roads before me, one leading to paradise and one leading to Gehenna, to hell. And I do not know to which one he will sentence me. The founder of rabbinism, the founder of what became Talmudic Judaism, the founder of Judaism as it exists, this false Judaism of the rabbis, not to be confused, with the true Judaism of Moses and the prophets. Confessed on his deathbed according to the teaching of Talmudic Judaism itself that he didn't know if he did the right thing or the wrong thing. He didn't know if he was right in inventing this other religion. He didn't know if God was going to send him to hell for doing it and he died in fear weeping. Now this rabbi, Yochanan ben Zakkai, who invented rabbinism, had a classmate. His classmate was Rabbi Shaul of Tarsus, who the Christians call St. Paul the Apostle. Shaul of Tarsus was a persecutor of Jewish Christians until on the Damascus Road he encountered the Messiah and became a preacher of the gospel. He was persecuted by the pagans, he was persecuted by his fellow rabbis, but he proclaimed Yeshua as Messiah to Jew and Gentile, appearing before Caesar in Rome, before the Areopagus, Apagites at the Areopagus in Athens, the Greek intellectuals, and before the Sanhedrin before the Roman governors and proconsuls in Caesarea. From prison, 
and from platform, in riots in Ephesus, proclaiming Yeshua, the Messiah, to Jew and Gentile alike. Well, he was martyred under the Emperor Nero in Rome in approximately 66 CE. Rabbi Shaul of Tarsus on his deathbed said something different. While his classmate, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai, was weeping, saying, I don't know if I did the right thing in replacing the synagogue for the temple, or the rabbi for the Kohen, or the mitzvot for the sacrifices. I don't know if I'm going to hell for doing it, dying in fear, weeping. His classmate, Rabbi Shaul of Tarsus, on his deathbed said, I've run the good race. I have fought the good fight. Henceforth, I know there is stored up for me a crown of righteousness. Both of them students of Gamaliel, trained by Gamaliel. You see the midoth of Rabbi Hillel in Paul's writings. Karl the Homer, Binyan Ketubim. Paul was plainly trained as a rabbi, the way he wrote and thought and argued. Two classmates, educated by the same professor, they were disciples of the same tzaddik. In the same school of Hillel, Yochanan ben Zakai and Shaul of Tarsus, one dying in fear of hell, not sure if what he did was even right, the other able to boldly approach the eternal throne and claim his reward through his Messiah alone. Every Jew will follow one of these two classmates if they believe in Hashem. They will either follow the rabbinism of Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai who admitted on his deathbed, who Judaism records as declaring he didn't know if he was even right for doing it. Or they will follow his classmate, Rabbi Shaul of Tarsus, who knew Yeshua was the Messiah. He saw him, the risen Lord. If you practice rabbinism, it's culture. You're caught up in it. You may think it's right because it seems to be the faith of your forefathers. Well, it may be the faith of your forefathers, but it's not the faith of the Avot, of your ancestors. It's not the faith of Moses and the prophets. It was invented after the temple was destroyed because the temple had to be destroyed once the Messiah came, according to Daniel chapter 9. For we read in the Talmud, the Sanhedrin wept and said, Oy vavoy lana, woe to us. The temple's destroyed, the Messiah has not come. No, the temple was destroyed because the Messiah did come. And his name is Yeshua. Rabbi Yeshua Bar Yosef Minet said it. Rabbi Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. He is the Messiah. He is my Messiah, and he is your Messiah. As a Jew, he is especially your Messiah. He's one of your people after the flesh. Which of these two rabbis are you following? Are you following rabbinism, or are you fulfilling the messianically fulfilled Judaism? Are you following Yohanan ben Zakkai? Where like him, you will die without the security of knowing if you're going to hell or not. Or will you follow his classmate, Rabbi Shaul of Tarsus, who knew where he was going? I know where I am going. And I'm going there for one reason. I put my faith in a Jewish rabbi and prophet who was the Messiah 
the Son of God, who became a man, who had no sin, but he took my sin and yours. He took my sin to give me and you his righteousness. He died my death and yours to give me and you his life. And he's coming again to set up the messianic kingdom promised to the descendants of the house of David. He will reign. And after that, he will reign forever and ever. For even as the rabbinic writings tell us, the earth will stand for 6,000 years, 2,000 without the Torah, 2,000 with the Torah, and 2,000 after the Messiah. And then a thousand years for the reign of the house of David and the millennial reign of Yeshua, the son of David. The earth will be restored to what it was before Adam fell. And then we enter the new heaven for all eternity. What no eye hath seen or ear hath heard hath the God of Israel prepared for those who love him. Mashinitzelagidlahabrimshalano <laughs> Jesus the Messiah, Yeshua. You can accept him. You can believe in him. You need to understand that our sin, as Isaiah said, has separated us from God. The only way back is for the Messiah to atone for your sin. All of those korbanim, those animal sacrificed in the temple, were pictures of him, a lamb without blemish, because he would have no sin, the scapegoat who would take our sin. They're pictures of him and what he did. Well, he's done it. That's why we don't need that temple anymore. Now a temple will be rebuilt. And one is coming called Sodom Mashiach. There's a false Messiah coming to deceive the Jewish people who will try to ultimately destroy them. And the rabbis will help him gain power. So will the Pope, the World Council of Churches, the interfaith movement will all follow this false Messiah. You will follow this false Messiah. Who's coming? unless you follow the true one. Accept him now, Yeshua. Ask him to forgive your sins and to come into you and make you nolad mechadash. Ten halef chadash, ruach chadash, lemaleotcha, uba lemaleotcha, em ruach hakodesh, nolad minadash, Adon Yeshua. You ask him to come into you and give you a new heart to make you a new creation, to fill you with his spirit, thanking him for paying the price for your sin and raising from the dead to give you eternal life. His resurrection is a historical fact even Judaism recognizes. The rabbis have been so wrong time after time. Bar Kokva, Shabbat Svi, Jacob Frank, Menachem Schneerson, one false messiah after another, and another one is coming still, who'll be infinitely worse than all the others combined. When you reject the true messiah, you find a false one. That is the history of Judaism, and it is the future history of rabbinism, Talmudic Judaism. I'm not asking you to give up Judaism, I'm asking you to believe in Judaism, to turn from rabbinism and believe in Judaism. Go back to the Torah. 
Yeshua said, if you believe Moses, you believe him also. If you really believe the Torah, if you really believe the prophecies about the Messiah and the Tanakh, you will know he is Messiah. Please visit our website. We have a video presentation, questions for our Jewish friends. Please watch it. Please contact us by email if you have any questions. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless you. Adonai Yevrechem, Adonai Yevrech Am Israel. Todaraba. Thank you. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings of Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen. Will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morial catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you.